I'm gonna just be honest, this was the greatest interview of all time. This is Donovan Copley from Hot Water. I am Carrie Miller. Hey, I'm Russell Prime Circle. Love, love, love. RTL. On your addiction. Let me not let me let me not just talk about it. I'll let me show you in the back of the window where I'm at. Cabinet has decided to place the entire country on alert level two. No, thank you for getting me out of bed this morning. Informative, relevant, diverse, interactive, so educational, fantastic, super fulfilling. I think most of the time in South Africa, certainly provincial cricket, they might as well play because there's no spectators going to watch anyone. (laughs) (laughs) They're hugging, shaking of hands, and kissing is a thing of the past. And then overnight into Thursday, we're expecting that cold front to spread showers into most... The playlist is incredible. Love the music. Best music. Entertaining. So entertaining. Entertaining. And entertaining. They wanted radio people because radio people can basically talk shit when things go wrong. A sight that just a few weeks ago seemed scarcely possible. Eden Park is back in business, a capacity... No, but seriously, on a serious note, I think I actually swiped right from the one day when I saw you. I don't know. You didn't. But you wouldn't know. Oh, dear. And I love Chris. If I tell you, I didn't wear a bra, that was so good. <laughs> Splashdown. As you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation for Splashdown. I will try to fix you. You guys are the lifeblood of what's left of this music industry. And of course, Noel Johnson. We love your sexy legs. Especially because of Noel Johnson. Jeez, that man is sexy. Thank God for RTLSA. You are a star. RTLSA. Home of legends. 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 Combine Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. This is your top three on RTLSA. Brought to you by Creative Design and Print. For all your specialized printing requirements, contact Lauren on 072-114-0329 or lauren.creativedesign at gmail.com. Own your piece of RTL by sponsoring a feature. Burning Top Bad Joke Friday in other news. Power Play Trivia. You will be helping keep RTL on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 Rand per week. Have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world. world, world. The RTL SA Top 10. Your top three. 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 Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 064 134 0020 or email info at nolljohnson.co.za. It's time to mass debate on RTL SA. Playlist is incredible. Love the music. Best music. Entertaining. So entertaining. Entertaining. RTL. RTL. You're listening to RTLSA. You're listening to RTLSA.
Monday the 6th of September 2021. It will go down as a day to remember. It was actually yesterday, early hours of yesterday morning, that uh, Jacob Zuma was given medical parole. Are you surprised? <laughs> Did you see it coming? I certainly am not surprised for one second, but it did happen. So we look at that in the main story today. We talk a bit about it and find out why he got medical parole and why we should be satisfied with that and accept it. And um, what happens next? What happens next? Because, I mean, there's uh, about 700 other charges, fraud charges that are piled up against him and he's supposed to be going to court for that so we'll have a closer look at what's going on over there um yeah but i'm not surprised at all i'm not surprised at all and you shouldn't be either right let's catch up with your news headlines now and check on your weather as well this brought to you by the sabc former president jacob zuma is still in hospital after he was granted medical parole yesterday zuma's parole conditions mean that he will be discharged and treated at home subject to supervision by correctional services the decision to release zuma from prison due to his ill health comes less than two months after he began serving a 15-month sentence for contempt of court The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research says a significant decrease in new COVID-19 infections in South Africa over the past week points to a decline in the third wave of the pandemic in this country. Now, the latest COVID-19 stats show that 5,931 new cases and another 76 deaths have been reported. And in news from the rest of the continent, the African Union and the United Nations have condemned the apparent ousting of Guinea's long-serving president, Alpha Conde. Special Forces soldiers surrounded the presidential palace yesterday and told the nation that they had dissolved its government and constitution and closed its land and air borders. You. Let's get you a quick weather update. Uh, clear skies over the northwestern part of the northern Cape. Other than that, expecting uh, partly cloudy to cloudy conditions across most parts of the country. Isolated showers and rain along the coastal regions and the adjacent interior of the western Cape. Showers and thunder showers from the southern part of Botswana through the central region scattered to widespread, uh, reaching the southeastern coastline. Now, the South African Weather Service has issued a yellow warning for disruptive rainfall over the central and southern parts of KwaZulu-Natal as well as the eastern parts of the Eastern Cape. Now, Gauteng today seeing isolated showers and thunder showers over the southern parts. It will be warm across the province. Pretoria peaking at 29. Fine to partly cloudy over Limpopo, Zanin 30, Tabazimbi a maximum of 31. While Mpumalanga seeing isolated showers and thunder showers over the southern parts. It will be cool to warm in places. Standerton a maximum of 27. KwaZulu Natal seeing scattered to widespread showers and rain. Disruptive rainfall possible over the central and southern parts. Kokstad, a maximum of 13, while the eastern Cape seems scattered to widespread showers and rain. Very cold in places. Somerset East only reaching a maximum of 9. The western Cape, showers and rain along the coastal regions. It will be cold in places, while Lanesburg expecting a maximum of 18. Fine to partly cloudy over the northern Cape. Sutherland, a maximum of 11 today. A cool day in Kimberley with 24. The free state seeing isolated to scattered showers and rain. Valcom a maximum of 24, while the last of the provinces, isolated showers and thunder showers, a warm day across the province with Dawung reaching a maximum of 29. Tomorrow seeing fine conditions over the western parts, isolated to scatter showers and thunder showers in places. That's your weather. Time now for a short break. Yeah, I tell you, we had a, a really short burst but it was a storm here in durban just a little while ago maybe like an hour ago and i uh, i thought yeah here we go my goodness i'm gonna have technical issues today let's hope that doesn't happen but anyway um my monday madness guest today ingrid von stein she joins us on the show she is a pioneer in online broadcasting and started a very successful little online radio show which has grown to be quite big and it's moved itself into the top 100 
across the world. So we have a chat to her today on the show. She's a very interesting woman, fun, bubbly. It's going to be very cool. Your top three today is Jenny's selection that brought to you by Creative Design and Print. Uh, Powerplay trivia coming your way as well. That brought to you by Bev Miller. We've got today in history, a burning topic in line with the main story. Um, Jacob Zuma granted medical parole. Are you surprised? Send me your comments via voice notes on 0641340020. The days of the year today. Today is mouth guard day. I might actually just take mine out and give it a little bit of a clean. I haven't used it much this year because of um, rugby being cancelled due to COVID-19. But I might just give my mouth guard a little clean today. Coffee ice cream day. <laughs> I'm sure Lauren's not going to be wanting to eat coffee ice cream today because she says that she's getting quite cold down in PE. It's also read a book day. Maybe the weather is just perfect for that. Maybe just snuggle up under a blanket or something and read a book. But the big one today, fight procrastination day. I love this one. We need to fight procrastination. Don't leave it for tomorrow. I always say at the end of my show, if it bugs you, deal with it. You know, this is what today is all about. Fight procrastination. Let's do that. Why don't we do that? Don't put off for tomorrow what you can do today. Hmm. There's a thought. Combine Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. You're listening to RTLSA. I want to be on lockdown with Noel Johnson. You are listening to. You listening to. You're listening to. You're listening to Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. And you're listening to Noel Johnson. And you're gonna party it up listening to Noel Johnson. As I was saying, you're listening to my mate, Noel Johnson. RTLSA is proudly brought to you by Caban Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. Visit www.kabancapital.co for more information. You're listening to RTLSA. RTLSA. It's number three on the RTLSA top ten. Uh, you are loved right here on RTLSA. Right, it's time to get into your power play trivia. Time to test your knowledge with power play trivia. Right, today's power, tri- power play trivia brought to you by Bev Miller. The question is about the movies. And the question I ask you today is what actress won her first Oscar for Kramer versus Kramer? What actress, which actress, name a name, uh, won her first Oscar for Kramer versus Kramer? I'll give you a clue. She won it as a best supporting role and uh, it was her first Academy Award. Uh, send me your answer via WhatsApp on 0641340020. Let's see if you know your music stuff. Ach, your movie stuff today. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> i tell you what, I'm having one of those days where uh, my brain is not 100% functional. And I know Marius is going to have a wise crack at me saying that. But anyway, um, yeah, that question again. Which actress won her first Oscar for Kramer versus Kramer? And uh, like I said, send me your answers via WhatsApp on 064 134 
be honest, this was the greatest interview of all time. This is Donovan Copley from Hot Water. I am Carrie Miller. Hey, I'm Russell Prime Circle. Love, love, love. RTL. My new addiction. Let me not, let me, let me not just talk about it. I'll, let me show you in the back of the window where I'm at. Cabinet has decided to place the entire country on alert level two. No, thank you for getting me out of bed this morning. Informative, relevant, clever, interactive, so educational, fantastic, super fulfilling. I think most of the time in South Africa, except in provincial cricket, they might as well play because there's no spectators going to watch anyone. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the hugging, shaking of hands, and kissing is a thing of the past. And then overnight into Thursday, we're expecting that cold front to spread showers into most... The playlist is incredible. Love the music. Best music. Entertaining. So entertaining. Entertaining and entertaining. They wanted radio people because radio people can basically talk shit when things go wrong. A sight that just a few weeks ago seemed scarcely possible. Eden Park is back in business. A capacity... No, but seriously, on a serious note, I think I actually swiped right from the one day when I saw you. I didn't know. Oh, you didn't. But you wouldn't know. Oh, dear. Oh, yes. And I love this dress. I tell you, I didn't even wear a bra. That was so good. <laughs> As you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation for Splashdown. I will try to fix you. You guys are the lifeblood of what's left of this music industry. And of course, Noel Johnson. We love your sexy legs. Especially because of Noel Johnson. Jeez, that man is sexy. Thank God for RTLSA. You are a star. RTLSA. Home of legends. 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 Own your piece of RTL by sponsoring a feature. Burning Top Badger Friday in other news. Power Play Trivia. You will be helping keep RTL on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 Rand per week. Have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world. Well, well, well. The RTL SA Top 10. Your top three. 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 Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 064 134 0020 or email info at nolljohnson.co.za. It's time to mass debate on RTL SA. You're listening to RTLSA. Well, it's time to have a look at what happened today in history. Um, let's see. Let's have a look. September 6th, 1901. President William McKinley is shot at the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York. The gunman, Leon Chalgosh, an anarchist who was executed the following month. Vice President Teddy Roosevelt succeeds McKinley when he dies more than a week after the shooting. 1997. Britain and the world bid farewell to Princess Diana with a funeral service in London's Westminster Abbey. And in Calcutta, India, weeping masses gather to pay homage to Mother Teresa a day after her death. 1916. Clarence Saunders opens the first self-service grocery store, the Piggly Wiggly, in Memphis, Tennessee. 1998. Akira Kurosawa, one of Japan's greatest filmmakers, dies in Tokyo at age 88. His work has influenced movies far and wide, from Hollywood westerns to Star Wars. And 1943. Roger Waters, co-founder and former frontman for the rock group Pink Floyd, is born in Surrey, England. Today in History, September 6th. Tim McGuire, The Associated Press. You're listening to RTLSA. A rave from the grave. Today is Fight Procrastination Day. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you right now, do not procrastinate for one second more. Send me a voice note on 064-134-0020. Do it now. Tell me what you think of Jacob Zuber getting medical parole. Are you surprised? Or did you, like me, see it coming? Did you suspect it? 
<laughs> I certainly did. Oh, well. Oh, joining the Shabir Sheikh Club. Love it. Art Matthews with a Impossible Machines. Before that, Tom Grennan. A little bit of love. And happy birthday, like I was saying, to Roger Waters. With Wish you were here from Pink Floyd, starting off three in a row. We're going to get into your main story on the other side of this. I'm going to talk about Jacob Zuma and um, the fact that he got medical parole. Why did he get it? What's going to happen next? How is this going to impact things going forward? We take a closer look at that on the other side of this. Combine Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. Own your piece of RTL by sponsoring a feature. Burning Top Badger Friday in other news. Power Play Trivia. You will be helping keep RTL on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 Rand per week. Have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world. world, world, world. The RTL SA Top 10. Your top three. 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 Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 064 134 0020 or email info at noljohnson.co.za. It's time to mass debate on RTL SA. You're listening to RTLSA. You're listening to RTLSA. Let me tell you something. This morning, prepping for the show, content-wise, it wasn't difficult at all. It was actually a piece of cake because there was so much content that we could have spoken about in the show today. From the IEC's bid to um, postpone the elections being denied, which is massive. Maybe we'll talk about that tomorrow. But the big story coming over the weekend had to have been the fact that Jacob Zuma... Um, got medical parole. What this means is that he will serve the rest of his sentence at home, probably at Nkandla, getting medical treatment there and whatever. And uh, you'll think back to 2009, I think it was, um, when um, Shabir Sheikh got medical parole and then a little while later he was found playing golf and stuff like that. So massive drama. This is all political, no doubt about it. But let's get a bit of background and find out what happened why it happened and what happens next. Well, President, former President Jacob Zuma has been placed on medical parole. The Department of Correctional Services has confer confirmed this. This means Zuma will complete the rest of his sentence in community uh, corrections. I'm joined now by Singabako Ngumalo, who speaks on behalf of the Department of Correctional Services. From your mouth uh, to the listening ears of South Africans, Singabako Ngumalo, tell us about the decision uh, that has been arrived at in relation to former president Jacob Zuma. A very good afternoon uh, to Les Zizwe. Uh, indeed, we have confirmed that um, Mr. Jacob Zuma has been uh, um, placed on medical parole. Uh, this is after the medical uh, reports that were received by the department. They were then considered and a decision was taken that uh, he be placed on medical parole. This is effectively uh, from today but we must state that he is still in hospital 
um, but uh, it's a decision that was made and at the right time once discharged then Mr. Zuma then you know can be taken home um, where he will continue to receive medical care but for now what we can confirm is that he's been granted medical parole. And you're saying this is based on a report that was received from medical um, officer uh, attending to him. Obviously, we can't discuss what you know ailment he suffers from or what he is facing. But a lot of South Africans will be asking how we went from routine, um, you know, uh, appointment with a doctor when you told us some three, four weeks ago, it was you that spoke to us and said that you've taken him for a routine um, observation or checkup, whatever the wording was, because I remember at the time there was a, a bit of quibbling about the wording between yourselves and the Jacob Zuma Foundation. Nevertheless, a lot of South Africans will be saying, how did we go from what was supposed to be routine to, you know, he's so sick, he can't remain in hospital. We've taken a decision to release him on parole. I'm glad you raised that because even uh, the discussion that we had, I clarified that our statement was clear as correctional services that he was taken for medical observation. Remember that he was receiving medical care uh, in our facility at Escort, but then the treating doctors decided that he'd be taken for in-hospitalization because there were things that they picked up and warranted that in-hospitalization would be the, the best um, uh, facility, you know, so that, you know, they can give him the care which is necessary. We're very clear on that and we've clarified that. Hence, we distance ourselves from other statements which were made by other parties because we could only comment from what was happening with someone who was in our care and where we had total control over that particular person and also having received um, you know, uh, various reports from those treating uh, healthcare practitioners. He was then taken to an outside facility where he's been receiving medical attention and we've been receiving reports continuously, hence then even up to where we are now, because those reports were pointing to one factor to say um, he has to be considered for medical parole. I cannot um, uh, divulge uh, what type of illness that he's suffering from, but the medical reports that we've received is not one, it's not two. We clearly indicated that you know, a decision needed to be taken. How many medical reports did you receive? Uh, it's not one, it's not two, but I cannot divulge how many, but there were medical reports because uh, this is a specialized area. It's not um, a decision that you can just take from just looking at the person. Medical examination yeah. has to be conducted, yeah, and then uh, it, it then um, um, a recommendation has to be made. But then eventually, Section 75, 7A, then a force national commissioner a responsibility to then you know, make that particular final decision to say, is this person granted medical parole or not? We will get to that section 757A in a moment, but just without divulging, and I'm not um, at, in any way asking you to divulge his medical condition. On a gradient, um, would you say that when he went to this observation, which was meant to be routine, regular, nothing extraordinary, initially to where he's getting a medical parole on a gradient would you say his state of health deteriorated over these weeks um, we are guided by what medical aspects you know inform us and we've been receiving you know uh, reports continuously and it was based on those particular reports to say you know we needed you know to uh, uh, to take a decision so uh, I wouldn't want to dive, uh, to, to dive into that particular space because it's a specialized area uh, that would be really risky for me because, you know, I'm a layman when it comes to, you know, um, 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 Absolutely. medical Absolutely. But I guess what I'm asking you is when you took it... Yeah. Okay. So what is clear here is that you ought to afford space to specialists to do yes. their job, then come back to advise you to say, as we examine this person, as we treat this person, this is what you know. Um, uh, uh, we are getting, and Fine. this is the treatment that we place him under, and this is how this person 
is coping or is being uh, or, 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 or has been stabilized and then they must then indicate to say you know what is the likelihood that this person eventually you know you know will recover fully and then be taken sure. back to a correctional facility so you are guided by these experts perfectly fine singabako so let's take his medical condition and put it aside and ask you as a department yes. that does corrections in our country and is responsible for detention of offenders you are saying to us that you were comfortable to have Jacob Gedlesegi Sazuma as an inmate at Escort Prison some three, four weeks ago. And now, having heard everything you've heard, you are no longer comfortable uh, to continue to have him in detention. You no longer consider it to be um, something that is uh, palatable within our human rights scheme uh, and our approach to corrections. The medical reports received clearly indicated that it's someone who has to be, you know, placed on, 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 on who has to be considered for medical parole because of what has come out of the, um, the investigations that they've conducted, the examinations that they've done, and the treatment that, that they've been placed him on. You know, it's been weeks now uh, um, uh, since he was admitted in hospital. He is still there. So it's based on those reports where we then had to make a decision to say, you know, it's something that can no longer, you know, be put aside. It needs to be acted upon so that at least Mr. Zuma can be given, you know, the, the, the dignity that he deserves, just like any other inmate who is ill to say, uh, perhaps medical parole, you know, will um, uh, assist this person to be back at home, continue to receive care. Um, and and on and also to be in the comfort of you know of, of the family, uh, provided who knows maybe it's the last days you know of, of that particular person. So is to afford a person you know dignity you know uh, you know uh, uh, during the days that you know we foresee to be very difficult moving forward. All right, I'm going to give you a chance to explain a bit more on that, that last part you are saying, that uh, perhaps this person could be, this could be their last days. Um, and, and the reason I do that, the only reason I do that, Singabako, uh, is not to be insensitive and try to suggest that Jacob Zuma is dying, but to stick to the letter of the law. And I'm giving you the opportunity to clarify. Because, you know, um, someone who's terminally ill, in terms of what governs that process, that is Section 79, uh, of the Correctional Services Act uh, that you are relying on. But that's not the reason you are citing in the statement. So I would want you to leave no confusion. Are you relying on Section 79 of that act, which has to do with someone who is terminally ill, and therefore, you know, the, the department deciding this person must be placed on medical parole? Or is the true position that you are guided by Section 75, which really is the discretion of the uh, uh, Commissioner of Correctional Services for someone who's serving a term of less than 12 months? So, Section 75 and 79 must be read together to say, is this person terminally ill? Is this person physically incapacitated? Is, is this person in a way hindered to conduct daily activities in a correctional facility? And then you then have to say, okay, having considered all of this, looking at what the medical reports is saying, then a decision has to be taken. And now, what happens now that he is placed uh, on medical parole? Uh, what does it entail? Is he free uh, altogether in that he's, um, you know, he's due to society uh, for contempt of court has been served? Or does he remain uh, someone who is within the authority of DCS? Medical uh, parole placement may means that Mr. Zuma will complete the remainder of the sentence in the system of community corrections. What do we mean by that? Is that you are placed out, but there are certain conditions that you need to abide by, mainly because you have not uh, finished serving your sentence. Up until that sentence expires, then that person will be removed from our system. But as things stand, Mr. Zuma will remain in our system, but under what we call community corrections, meaning now this is a person who is back in the community, but there are certain conditions which are then attached to him so that then this person must comply with these particular conditions. Are you able to share the conditions for Mr. Zuma? When you talk about community corrections, what can South Africans expect Mr. Zuma will be doing by way of community corrections? Unfortunately, we do not share um, parole conditions uh, with the public, but 
basically what uh, I, I can sum up in, in a way to say, it's a measure one to manage the risk, but also to assist you know that person who's been placed out, but also to make make it a point that there is some form of supervision to check uh, on that particular person because should a person who's placed out on medical parole or any other form of parole should that person deviate from those conditions we then have to act because that person has not completed the sentence all right singabakongomalo thank you for your time and uh, really engaging us on some of the decisions and the processes around the release on medical parole uh, of former president jacob zuma singabakongomalo there telling us that effectively from today although mr zuma remains in hospital i'll be back with yeah, sure. It was a great interview, I must say, but um, very deflective from the Department of Corrections with regards to what exactly it means and what is going on. And no clarity, no real clarity given based on Section 75 and 79 of the Corrections Act. So, yeah, it sounds to me, if I can go out on a limb here, it sounds to me like this is a smoke screen and that there might be political um, moves here. But I can't confirm that. Um, it just sounds too, <sighs> too easy. Mm, I don't know. Anyway, that's where we'll leave it. And we'll keep an eye on what happens next because it's very interesting to see how this is going to unfold. Uh, it's your top three um, brought to you by Creative Design and Print on the other side of this. And today's selection is that of Jenny. In your piece of RTL by sponsoring a feature. Burning Top Bad Joke Friday in other news. Power Play Trivia. You will be helping keep RTL on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 Rand per week. Have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world. Well, well, well. The RTL SA Top 10. Your top three. 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 Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 064 134 0020 or email info at noljohnson.co.za. It's time to mass debate on RTL SA. Playlist is incredible. Love the music. Best music. Entertaining. So entertaining. Entertaining. RTL is RTL. You're listening to RTL SA. This is your top three on RTLSA. Brought to you by Creative Design and Print. For all your specialized printing requirements, contact Lauren on 072-114-0329 or lauren.creativedesign at gmail.com. You ask for it, we play it. Your top three on RTLSA. It's your top three brought to you by Creative Design and Print. And today's selection was that of Jenny. And what a great selection it was. Silver Pizzoli with Around My Dream, that one you just heard, Salt and Pepper, Push It. Before that, Jennifer Lopez, Jenny from the Block. Is that why you asked for that song, Jenny? <laughs> oh, man, great selection nonetheless. And of course, your top three brought to you by Creative Design and Print. This is your top three on RTLSA. Brought to you by Creative Design and Print. For all your specialized printing requirements, contact Lauren on 072-114-0329 or lauren.creativedesign at gmail.com. Right, coming up in the rest of the show, we still got your power play trivia question brought to you by Bev Miller. Which actress won her first Oscar for Kramer vs. Kramer? Send me your answer via WhatsApp on 064-134-0020. Our trivia king has not given me the answer today he doesn't know <laughs> but i have got a few correct answers that have come through already your burning topic brought to you by cheryl and kirsten murrigan jacob zuma being granted medical parole are you surprised comments via voice notes on 064-134-0020 and um, i'll play them back a little later in the show on the other side of this however ingrid von stein i hope i'm saying it right she better correct me when i get get her on air 
But uh, joining me on show, and she's a pioneer in online broadcasting. This is going to be a lot of fun. Combine Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. You're listening to RTLSA. I want to be on lockdown with Noel Johnson. You are listening to. You listening to. You listening to. You listening to Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. And you're listening to Noel Johnson. And you're gonna party it up listening to Noel Johnson. As I was saying, you're listening to my mate, Noel Johnson. RTLSA. You're listening to RTLSA. Digital media is something that has become very big over the last, I'd say decade or so maybe a bit longer but um, my guest today joining me from Cape Town Ingrid has started a little radio station a little while back that has become quite big and um, joining me on the show today Ingrid welcome to it and thank you so much for making the time to join me I have to tell you I, I'm probably more excited than you are <laughs> what an amazing experience this visual radio is I know it's incredible hey it's uh it's something that it happened is. by See, accident. <laughs> aren't the best things in the world, didn't they all happen by accident? Look, I'm e- here. I was an accident. Exactly. But your accident has <laughs> started bearing fruit um, now as we're going. You sent me a message on Friday and you said to me, you told me something about your numbers and where you're sitting in the world at the moment. Care to share? You know what? It was... Let me just backtrack a little bit. It got to Wednesday afternoon and I literally had, I felt that the four walls in my studio were closing in on me. And I just thought, oh, why, why am I doing this? Why do I want to do this? I must be mad to do this. And I actually shut my office. Um, I said to the team, go on, you just do what you need to do today. And I'm, I'm out of here. I'm taking a couple of days. And then that evening I got notification that the um, global rankings have come out. And yes, there are lots of online radio stations, but Eber's radio is quite specific because mm. currently we're the only dedicated business radio station, online station in South Africa and in Africa. And then to come out in the rankings and to be sitting at number 18 globally out of mm. 138 stations is remarkable when you think that you you competing, for lack of a better word, with, with stations like Bloomberg and, you know, CNN live stream. And it's just like, oh, well, there we go. Now I have to go back to work tomorrow. <laughs> Don't you just hate it when that happens? <laughs> yeah, I, I do, you know, really. Don't they understand that I need some time out as well? Exactly. I like, to take Friday, I like to take Fridays off and Friday. And I think this is probably why I've survived um, digital radio because, man, is it a ride. I take Fridays off and I learn something new, something that I've never done before. And I've learned quite amazing things. I learned how to fix my own tumble dryer. Who knew it only has three movable parts? Oh, wow. Cost cost me 47 Rand to buy um, three new parts, but then it cost me a lot of backwards and forwards on a YouTube. (laughs) Um, And plasters all over my hands to figure it out. But she's my 22 year old tumble dryer is brand new again. (laughs) Do you do you rely 
on YouTube like I do. I, I literally learned to design websites and I've learned to do a lot of things just by YouTube tutorials and stuff like that. I love YouTube and, and I've got a 15 year old who'll come to me and she'll go, how do I do this? Then I go, um, have you gone to the professor? And she goes, okay, I'll go, I'll go to YouTube because <laughs> you, you're going to find it there. We live in this information age where it's available and find someone mm. that you connect with um, in terms of voice and visual and watch their stuff. Uh, you know, I, I have a 1976 Beetle as my everyday car. Oh, wow. And I've learned everything about this Beetle that I needed to through YouTube. I mean, again, it was mm. difficult. I changed, recently changed the tie rods on the front of my Beetle. I didn't even know what tie rods were, but it was on the list from the mechanic. You need this. And then I did some research, found it, and thought, well, it doesn't look that difficult. Um, okay, it was difficult. I have to say it was difficult because I don't have the most patience in the world. Um, but I got it sorted out. And, then, you know, I'm so, I, I get so excited to drive this car because uh -huh. I've done the stuff. You know, my biggest problem, though, is something like that. And when I was, when I was still married, my ex was very much, we need to be hands-on in the house. And instead of getting a plumber in, to do the job, we need to do it ourselves. And, you know, I admired her for wanting to do that. But this is where I had the issue. Yes, YouTube could sort me out and hook me up and tell me exactly how to change the internals of a toilet. But if you do not have the tools, a 15 minute job takes you three days. <laughs> Not only that, you know, there's a simple thing that says, oh, I'm going to change the washer on my tap because it's dripping. Yeah. Found this video, watched it, hmm, went and got the little rubber, it fitted, I knew it was the right size. What the video didn't say and should have said was switch the freaking water off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was this simple job and, and a little rubber that cost a few cents turned into a huge extent because I managed to flood the place. So I firmly believe if it's not something that you want to do and you can do, mm. um, pay a professional, really pay a professional. <laughs> oh man, I totally agree. So you're in Cape Town. What's the mother city like at the moment? It's, I think it's actually schizophrenic because yesterday and today, it cannot make up its mind if it wants to be winter, summer, spring or autumn. I think because it's like that. One minute the sun is shining. It's like that across you the know, country the sun, at the moment. Yeah, the sun is shining. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I live literally very close to the beach. So I can see the sun shining out there. But over my, my little block, it's raining. Um and if i drive five minutes away from my house the sun is shining and then another five minutes the wind is blowing it's like mm. absolute do. chaos um the the da runs the western cape and you know there's been a lot of drama in the last <laughs> few days or so regarding municipal elections what's what's it like on the ground there at the moment because i mean the da sort of had a big victory on the weekend when the IEC's bid was dismissed by the Constitutional Court. What's the news running around in Cape Town around that at the moment? Because I'm pretty sure that the DA are making a lot of noise about it. You know, whether it's the DA or any other political party, they are all masters at talking the biggest load of crap and making the most <laughs> noise. And when it's required that you actually roll up your sleeves and do the work, Mm. There's no one there, unava unavailable. Um, I really I, I try to pay zero attention to politics. Okay. Um, my, philosoph my philosophy is very, very simple. Mm. I'm not going to bitch and complain about anything. I am part of that problem. And if there's litter lying around, I will pick it up. And if the canal down the road is blocked because the sewer, the, the, 
the plastic has bunged up the thing. Instead of complaining on Facebook or social media, or whatever platform, take a black bag, go down there, get your hands dirty, pick up the litter. It's your litter. Mm. Uh, hello. Yeah, I try not to. <laughs> not, not to if worry I, yourself I'm, too much about it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I if, I if I'm desperate for some entertainment, then what I will do is put on a news channel. Mm. Um, and and just be entertained because it's like the the soapy would be called the waltz of the idiots mm -hmm. because one's a big idiot than the next um <laughs> and, it, and it's like really an intimate show because you spend those few minutes looking up someone's nostril or they have a weird <laughs> light at the back of the um yeah so I, and, and my and my kids say whatever you do please do not talk politics to anybody because my philosophy <laughs> I have a lovely word for politicians. I call them all Twitter mapuses. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Well, I'm, I'm in agreement with you because I think they, um, that's probably the most stupid profession in the world anyway, because it doesn't make any sense and they don't make any sense. I want to talk to you a little bit about online broadcasting and that, but I first want to just keep on bantering a little bit. Have you had the vaccine? What are your thoughts on it? I have had the vaccine. In fact, I've had my second one, so I'm completely vaccinated. I must say I was a little bit disappointed because my 5G signal is still crappy. <laughs> um, I really thought I was going to grow a unicorn horn and, and, and would, would hire myself out for children's parties. You know what? <laughs> we all got vaccinated as kids. We mm. get the flu vaccine and we... We take all sorts of things. What do you have to lose? Getting a vaccine is certainly, certainly easier than being on a ventilator. So yeah. I decided I'll get the vaccine. I quite like the experience. I met amazing people. Um, I did some amazing interviews while I was standing in the queue. It's amazing, you know, when you're in, in this world, you, because cell phones today are so smart and the recording devices are so brilliant that you literally mm. can do an interview with someone live in a queue and, and, and you can broadcast it. Mm. So that was an amazing experience. What do you think about guys that don't want to vaccinate? Um, and the reasons, oh. obviously the reasons are varied from the, the fact that they don't know what's in it to the fact that they think they're going to get microchipped uh what, what would you say to people like that um i don't know i think they all suffer from a very severe virus it's called the id 10 t virus um, and that for those people who are not very very sharp or write it down id 10 t it's called idiot <laughs> you know what we we go to restaurants and we eat food and we have no idea how it's been prepared we drink drinks that we have no idea how it's made. We all carry smart devices with us. Why do you need a microchip? Your phone's tracking every movement you make. Mm. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's your choice. But then do me a favor. Can you please stay at home? Mm. Do, you, do you support the pro-choice thing or do you think that the vaccine should be mandatory? You know what? It's it's very difficult. I think everybody should have freedom of choice. That's just my personal philosophy. It makes it very difficult. Uh, I understand both sides. I really, really do. But but how do you police this? Because hmm. where does that line stop? Okay, and I know it's very different because then we're going to start looking at things. Well, you can only have one child. Um, men who have more than two children, it should be mandatory that they get. Um, What's that little snippy called? Um, <laughs> the snip. <laughs> yeah, the sick to me. It's going to be difficult, but certainly we're already seeing how difficult it is. If you're not vaccinated and you like to travel, well, you ain't going to go anywhere other, other than within your own borders, which is maybe not a bad thing. Hmm. But, you know, it's going to make it difficult to travel. Um, we all have family and friends. Well, most of us have family and friends overseas, and you and you want to be able to see them. And you know, unless you have your little vaccination passport, you're not going to be able to travel for a while. Mm. Mm. You know what? 
we've all we've all had the smallpox vaccination. Do you, do you know anybody who's had smallpox? <clears throat> no, but I believe you can still get it regardless, even if you've been vaccinated. Even if you've been vaccinated against COVID, you can still get it. It's, it'll mm. just reduce the risk of landing up in hospital. Um, and we all know what our healthcare system's like. You know? yeah. So I would rather take my chances with a vaccine than with the hospital system. I'm, I totally agree with you. And um, I've, I've had uh, my vaccine, so I'm fully vac vaccinated myself and I'm a big supporter of getting the vaccine. Online broadcasting. You've been touted as a pioneer of online radio. Where did it all begin for you? How did it, how did it begin? What was the thought process when you did you wake up one morning and say, hey, let's start an online radio show? Or was it something that you built into and had a goal and set that goal? Or how did it start? Uh, let's let's go back 12 years. 12 years ago, there was no such thing as online radio. Yeah. Okay. It, it just didn't exist, and there were, was the odd thing called this thing called a podcast. And um, I was fortunate. I've had my own um, communications and marketing agency for twenty eight years, and I just saw the way that communication was changing and how smartphones was changing that, and and our phones were becoming first screen. And I kept telling all the agencies that I worked with and my clients that this is becoming first screen and they laughed at me and they went, oh, you know, Ingrid, really, you really out there with the fairies. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I went over to the States, I went to Las Vegas for the international um, technology show, which is like on another planet. So if you like technology and you love gadgets, this is like, it's like going to heaven. Mm. Um, and it's kilometers and kilometers and kilometers of of exhibition. And I think on the second day, right at the back, was this little stand, wasn't terribly well branded. And there were these two guys who had headphones on and they were chatting to each other. And they were just like having the best time. And I thought, hmm, what are they doing? And I, I sat down and I introduced myself and I said, what are you guys doing? And they said, oh, well, we creating podcasts and we you can stream it online and people can listen to you live online it's like, no shit sherlock wow um and you know I, I came back and i just thought this this is going to be the future it's going to be huge and and how how can i figure out how to do this and i got in contact with them and they had started this company and the technology at that stage with the equipment to be able to do it. Remember, now things have changed massively in, mm. in, in all these years. Um, we didn't have all the things that we have today. And Rhonda, they said, oh, you know what, to set up a station with all the costs and the equipment and the training and the software and the, all of these things, we're looking about um, half a million US dollars. Sure. Mm, and I lifted up my mattress and went, nope, don't have it. Um, and just <laughs> kind, of, kind of parked it for, for the moment because I just knew that there had to be a way to do this. Long story short, I met a young man at a computer shop in Johannesburg a couple of months later. One of, you know those, those little nerdy kids mm. with the really thick glasses? Who, who have zero social skills and I popped in because my laptop was giving me problems and and he was busy listening to what sounded like um, a church service. And I said, what are you doing? And he said, no, auntie. Um, he says, on, on Sundays, I record the service and then I edit it and then I burn it onto DVDs and then I go around the neighborhood on my bicycle and I drop it off for all the old people because they know how DVD players work. See how mm. we're dating ourselves. <laughs> um, and they listen to church services. And I spoke to him about this whole concept of online radio and well, how's it going to work? And, and I said, come up, can you come up with a solution? And he said, I don't know, but I'll try. I said, well, you try, I'll pay you for the solution. Long story short, um, fast forward, now the company is called NetDynamics and Chris Grant, who was 
there before anybody had heard of it in this country. And we worked out a system and he said, okay, auntie, you can, you can broadcast live. And I thought, oh, okay, well, that's great. But what I'm going to talk about. Mm. And then I just remembered what it was like being a young entrepreneur. The only way I could get any assistance was to go, I don't know what it's called today, was the Small Business Bureau or the Biz Chamber of Commerce Business, whatever it was. Mm. And off I went to go ask them about, about this thing. And they were clueless. They'd never been entrepreneurs. They were employed and said, oh, well, you can do this. And I'm going, well, have you done this? No, they haven't. And it's like, well, you can't help me. Went to my bank manager and he said, well, Ingrid, you know, I can give you a loan, but um, you'd have to get someone to stand surety for you. And I'm going, no, I don't want to do that either. And then I realized, actually, to be an entrepreneur in this country is flipping hard. Mm. Um, so what can I do to help other younger people, even not younger people, to navigate this in a place where they could go to for free because we don't all have money to go and do a course on marketing and a this and a digital course and a social media course. Um, how do I put all this in one place and how do I get amazing people to share what they know with everybody else? And um, I'd worked with Arthur Goldstock, in, you know, we're both journalists and our paths have crossed for many, many years. And I know that Arthur, whilst he's a business journalist, his passion, man, the love, the guy loves gadgets and he loves technology. <laughs> so I phoned him and I said, Arthur, I want to do this thing called online radio and I want you to be my first guest. And he said, well, how are we going to do this? And I explained it to him and he said, oh, that's pretty cool. He says, I don't know what I'm going to say, but yeah, let's do this. And, and Arthur Goldstock was my very first guest. Sure. I was going to create this business radio station and whatever we did, we were going to record and edit and then share as a podcast afterwards for free. Well, what are we going to call this? And, you know, in South Africa, um, I, I love the colloquialisms that we all have. So it, it's quite an African thing where it's like, um, you know, e-pen, hmm. e-taxi. So I thought, okay, I'll call it e, 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 e radio. <laughs> My kids thought it was so freaking lame. You know, who wants to listen to a station called Eber's Radio? Um, and, my, and my family just laughed at me as well. They thought I'd lost the plot. And I started broadcasting from my dining room table with Arthur Goldstock. We did it via um, Skype. And all this stuff was new. I mean, no one had heard of mm. doing this stuff. And we had a conversation. It was me and my dogs and Arthur sitting in, in, his, in his office. And literally, it just, it grew from there. It, mm. it just grew. You know, I've, I've never, ever spent a single cent on marketing or advertising. It literally grew by word of mouth. Um, and that was 10 years ago. And, and here we are today where we're averaging about sometimes just over, sometimes just under um, a million unique IP addresses that connect with us mm. on a monthly basis. Average streaming time is 42 minutes. Now, for someone to connect to a station and, and listen to it for 42 minutes tells mm. you, flip the content must be awesome. Yeah, And absolutely. also because I'm, I'm focused in specifically on the business market, and, and particularly right now, and I've seen we saw a massive growth at the beginning of lockdown because now we all have to work at home. Well, who the fuck knew how to work from home? Exactly. How, 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 are, we, how are we going to do this? And then suddenly, I mean, our inbox, our WhatsApp, and all our feeds were just flooded going, how do we do this? How, and so we started having conversations with people and going, well, how do you do this? You have to look at your internet speed. You have to look at... What do you need at home? What are the requirements from you? What about security? What about now you've brought equipment home from work? It's the work's laptop and thing. Well, who, if my house gets broken into, who's responsible for it? Who must pay for it? And um, we've just had the most incredible conversations. Um, and, and we've all kind of learned and grown and shared together. I mean, our downloads on whatever topic are through the, through the roof. And there were occasions sort of like three months into the very first lockdown 
I actually thought, okay, today is the day we're going to break these servers. Um, because the traffic was just coming in and um, very fortunate that our that our servers sit in Germany and and because the station has just continued to grow, um, net dynamics have set up that as soon as they can see one server's reaching capacity, it automatically switches to the next, to the next, to the next. So we never nice. have downtime. When ESCOM decide that we'd be naughty and they switch off the power, we can still broadcast because we're not reliant on mm. power in South Africa, which is sad because such an awesome country and such amazing things happening here, and yet they're just like a few sectors that just Pugapi. What do you think is the the secret? You were talking about the content and you know average watch time and things like it. But what is the key to creating good content, in your opinion? In my opinion, would be just be real. Be authentic. No one wants to listen to some twat sounding like they've got hot potatoes in their mouth. Mm. The word of mouth is incredibly powerful. If you just if you just look at your own circle, so your best mate says to you, "Yes, no, this this is amazing," and you go, mm. "Well, why is it amazing?" Oh, and I really like the taste, and I like the way that the this thing screws off. And you go, "Okay, well, I'm going to try it." Um, and then you go to the shop and you get one for yourself and you try it and you go, look, they're right. So you tell 12 other people. Mm. And that's exactly the same with content. It's got, to, it, it's got to resonate with someone. I mean, like how long is a piece of string? So I'm, I'm not a lifestyle station. So I focus primarily on business and the world of business. Now, it is massive. What does business entail? It entails people. Hmm. and human interaction and communication, but it also their legal requirements, their financial requirements. What does the law say? What does Papier want me to do? What is the latest technology? Oh, shit, I need to buy a new vehicle for for the business. What's the best vehicle out there? So hmm. catering specifically for people in the business sector, wanting to go into business on, on everyday things that you need in business. And the library is there. It's free. All we ask is, if you enjoyed the conversation, share it. Hmm. And and that is the, the power of word of mouth, but also the power of connection. You know, we have not set, spent in 10 years, we're going to be 10 years next month, have not spent a single cent on branding or marketing. It has all been word of mouth and, and just sharing. And that's from creating engaging um, content. Speak about engaging. Um, you did send me the answer for the power play trivia question <laughs> and um I'm, I'm glad to say that you got it right so we're going to handle the power play trivia question in just a second and i want you to give us the answer are you keen for that yes is it a new question or the same question same question but hold that thought i've got to play my sting first okay, <laughs> okay brilliant Time to test your knowledge with Power Play Trivia. Right, the Power Play Trivia question was brought to you by uh, Bev Miller today. What actress won her first Oscar for Kramer versus Kramer? And I got correct answers from Janine, Cheryl, Lauren, Bev, Sarah, and Zelda, as well as you, Ingrid. What is that correct answer? It was a lucky guess, and you've told me you've confirmed it was correct, Meryl Streep. So when it comes to a female, when it comes to a female actress, no matter what the category is, you're always fairly safe game with Meryl Streep. <laughs> well, Meryl Streep was absolutely correct. He has a little motivational video for that. The nominees for the outstanding performance by an actress in a supporting role are Jane Alexander in Kramer vs. Kramer. Barbara Berry in Breaking Away. Candace Bergen in Starting Over. Marielle Hemingway in Manhattan. And Meryl Streep in Kramer vs. Kramer.
And the winner is... Thank you, my dear. Welcome, my dear. Meryl Streep in Kramer vs. Kramer. <laughs> Holy mackerel. Uh, I'd like to thank Dustin Hoffman and Robert Benton, to whom I owe this. Stanley Jaffe for giving me the chance to play Joanna. And Jane, Alexander, and Justin for the love and support during this very, very delightful experience. Thank you very much. Kaban Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. Own your piece of RTL by sponsoring a feature. Burning Top Badger Friday in other news. Power Play Trivia. You will be helping keep RTL on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 Rand per week. Have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world. world, world. The RTL SA Top 10. Your top three. 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 Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 064 134 0020 or email info at noeljohnson.co.za. It's time to mass debate on RTL SA. You're listening to RTLSA. You're listening to RTLSA. And we continue with Monday Madness. And my guest uh, on the show today, the owner and founder of eBiz Radio, Ingrid. Um, you say you don't really get too involved in politics, but there was a massive political move this weekend that we cannot deny and not even um, brush under the carpet. J Jacob Zuma mm -hmm. getting medical parole. <laughs> Firstly, you were, you, were you surprised? Hell no. <laughs> I, won, I, won the, I won the family lottery. Um, it was, you know what? It's really, really sad because what happens in this country is there is no justice. There really isn't. Mm. They're, they're little pockets, but on the whole, there's not. You can you can get away if you have enough money and you have a legal team that you can throw money at. No, no one's going to jail. Hmm. It, it's just sad. And what, what are we saying to the young people in this country? We're saying to them, it's okay to steal. It's okay to lie. It's okay to take from those who have nothing, but we're still going to take the little that they do have. It's, you know, I, I do. And I, and I can get quite emotional about this. It's really cry this beloved country because I love this country. I, 
this is my home and and to see what is happening and that's why you know the time of politicians and political parties really can we not get past this Hmm. we are amazing human beings in this country if you want something done is does the government do anything for you no so if you want something done decide i'm going to do this and i'm going to get like-minded people with me and we're going to do this they only have power if you vote them in Hmm. so my, my dream is you you know there was that um, song, I think it was Pink Floyd or oh, no wait. Um, when when two countries go to war and nobody pitches up for the war, who was that? Um, is that John Lennon? No. I don't know. It was like this thing, and these countries had, were all called to war. And nobody pitched. What what I would love to see, and it's like a reoccurring dream. But for me, it's so real, and I keep sharing it with everybody because. Maybe we can just spread this. It's election day and nobody turns up. Mm. At the polls. Just don't pitch. Because then we've spoken. We've, we've spoken that South African people, you can see it. There's much more of this happening where we're standing up and going, actually, not acceptable. Yeah. No, no. And if it means I'm not going to pay tax, I will, I'm not paying tax. What, are you going to put me in jail? Where are you mm. going to put me? They fall. Do you think you know? Do you think us as South Africans are too fickle? Do you think that we are, you know, we, we have our communities that sort of stick together, but as a nation, overall, we don't really stand together? No, because, <clears throat> because it's the... You know, I'm going to look at this now from, I'm going to step back and I'm going to look at it from a communication strategist perspective. Okay. The best way to cause chaos is to divide people. So you say this to this group of people and you say that to that group of people. And then you say they said it and then you say they said it. So what happens is people are also inherently lazy. So they don't like to check. Actually, is this real? I mean, if you just look, go back a little bit, look at the whole Bell Pottinger thing, how they managed to manipulate the conversation into this whole thing of white monopoly capital. Mm. And and certain political parties pushed that agenda. Of course, they pushed that agenda because they hired a communication strategist to create the havoc, to push it out. And instead of us going, actually, no, you know, so if, I love South Africa, and, I, and South Africans always uh, a burkan, uh, lack a plan, Mark. We can make a plan here. But we're also quite flippin' lazy. You know, we all sit there and we bitch and we moan and we whine. Actually get up and do something. Mm. You know, and if 55 million people get up and go, actually, bye-bye now, go home. Mm-hmm. We're not listening to you, you know. But this we is why... This. Look what happened. Yeah, sorry. No, this is exactly why what happened with the IEC's bid being de- denied by the uh, Constitutional Court on Friday. Why it's so significant, because the ANC, as the ruling party, failed to submit 94, I think, applicants for municipal elections, which means that based on this bid, those application or the, or the, the ANC will not have representation in those municipalities. And I don't know, I think maybe it's a a lucky but good move for South Africa to actually have no ANC representation in certain municipalities, and 94 of them as a matter of fact. Um, yeah, and I think that maybe that will create a little bit of synergy from the from the opposition, so to say, to actually make a difference in those communities. Mm, I don't know. You keep wanting to draw me into this political conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and some okay. of the words I, 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 I can't use because of, you know, just I would like to see, <laughs> and in, I would like to see candidates standing in the election that are not party representative, that they are actual individuals who agree mm. to be a public servant and are not paid for it. Sort of like Other an independence. 
sort of like an independent stand. Absolutely. You will then go and vote for the person that you believe in your area actually has been working, is working, and will continue to work with you and for you. you know? mm. Not people who are political um, or professional political people. I mean, they're, they're a couple of culprits and we've seen them. Then they're wearing that color. Whoops. And then they're wearing that color. Then yeah. they're wearing that color. And at the end of the day, it's not about doing what's right and, and standing up and being the voice. It's about, well, you offering me more money, you offering me more money. Mm. And that's, so that's always been a rule of mine. Um, I'm one of the few people in this country who specialize in crisis communication. Unless you are a politician or a political party, I will not work with you. Sorry, end of story. I don't care what you offer me. I don't care how much you threaten me. The answer is no. Yeah. Um, because I like to work. You will sit in front of that camera and you will tell the truth. You know, I'm not mm. going to lie for you and you're not certainly going to sit in front of a camera and lie to people. Well, we have a burning topic um, every day of the week, pretty much, which is brought to you by Cheryl and Kirsten Murrigan. And today's topic was um, Jacob Zuma grants a medical parole. Are you surprised? You've already said that you weren't surprised at all. I just want to share a couple of my um, listeners' opinions as well. Have your say now. It's the burning topic. Good morning, burning topic. I'm definitely not surprised that Zuma is going to be on medical parole. I think that was coming. I think that was the next the next step uh, to avoid him to serve his sentence uh, for contempt in jail. He's just getting special treatments. Nobody seems to have any information on how he, ill he is or what's going on and uh, I just feel that the DA have definitely got the right to ask for um, the minutes um, of the parole meeting and records mm. um, to know what's going on. It just doesn't make any sense to me. He's getting special treatment, treated like a king, can have his family around him and just be in the comfort of his own home. Um, yeah, and uh, we don't even know the true um, answers of, of what's going on. I mean, uh, is the normal, um, uh, civ you know, civilian treated like that um, if they've got medical conditions? Do they also get to go home and have medical parole and be treated like that? So just uh, to me, it doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, just shows you what a lot of money can do, hey? Yeah, there we go. Thanks, Lauren, all the way from PE. Well, now, did anyone expect anything different from Zuma? <laughs> it's been proven in the past. All big names, as soon as they get convicted and have to do jail time, suddenly have a medical condition. Quite honestly, everyone in the freaking country has a medical co condition and medical conditions can be controlled. So he should be in prison, serving the time which he deserves and get his medication in prison. Just because he's a big shot or thinks he's a big shot, he thinks he can get away with it and he probably will. Mm. But um, my, from my point of view, you do the crime, serve the time. Sarah in Durban, thank you so much for that. So there we go, Ingrid. I think um, everybody agreeing with you on this. And I promise you, I don't normally do big political conversations, but it was just that, you know, this happened over the weekend and it just was <laughs> what it was. Nola, actually, you know what? I'm just looking at the, the visuals of the promo for, for, for this morning show that you put out. And I have a bone to pick with you. This is the second time in, in my career that I'm on the same page as Jacob Zuma. <laughs> and the last time, oh man. Sorry about the last that. Time, you know, I know the last time I got, I got bombarded by friends going, oh, I thought you don't work in politics. Look, there you are walking with Jacob <laughs> Zuma. You know, and it's like, no, now I'm on with the same thing with Jacob. Look there with Jacob Zuma again. <laughs> 
Oh, Ingrid, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it wasn't my intention at all. Let's drop the political okay. thing now. In, yes. in closing, before I let you go, someone that's young, ambitious, hungry, wants to do what you do, how do they go about mm. it in this climate and what do they need to get it done? Well, as soon as this is the Monday Madness show, you need to be insane. Yes. <laughs> First, let's be recorded. You need to be insane. Secondly, you're in the most amazing position in the world because literally the world is your oyster. There's so much stuff available out there. First thing you do, go to Eber's radio, type in, how do I start an online radio station? How do I create a podcast? There are hundreds of amazing people from all over the world who've shared their insights go to YouTube. The one thing you need to know is it takes time. It takes dedication. It takes perseverance. It takes agility. And it, you've got to be able to take criticism um, and practice, 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 practice. Listen to other people go, oh, I really like that. I like that tone. What resonates with me? And, and pick something that you're passionate about. You know, you are passionate about what you do and and it comes across you can you can see it in your face you can see it in your eyes you can hear it in your voice um just persevere you know don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it if this is what you want to do just do it don't think i need to get an internship at a traditional radio station mm. darlings that's so 2018 like really this this is this is the new frontier and, and, and it's an exciting space to be in. And, and Noel, I have to just tell you, I am unbelievably impressed and I can't stop smiling. What you do is amazing. Oh, I'm, I'm thank looking you. at it. And, and I do remember a few years ago, there was another station with a very well-known person who also did visual radio. And the mistake that they made was twofold. One, they were driven by ego. Mm. And secondly, they were driven by greed. And the focus was so on those two things that they forgot about the actual execution. And everything, it, it didn't flow. The video kept getting stuck. It didn't, what the person was saying didn't link to what was on screen. And again, you had to look at just these two people's faces. I love the way that you have learned and probably taught yourself how to integrate that when you're playing something, a promo live on air, you're actually seeing it. I, mm. I think you're amazing. I think the oh, station's amazing. Um, and, and my daughter was quite flabbergasted. She said, will you gang on to a music and lifestyle show? She says, please, mama, whatever you do, don't guess the lyrics of a song because you just make up your own <laughs> We all do that. <laughs> Ingrid, you know, where do you... When, you... when you're having those days and you think to yourself, why am I doing this? Yeah. You're doing it. Can you see that smile on your face and that feeling of amazement? That's why you do it. You Absolutely. can't take money with you when you move to the next place. Absolutely. What are your plans for Ebers over the next decade or so? Where do you see it going? Where do you want it to go? Where I want it to go is, so what we've introduced a couple, about six weeks ago, we introduced some Afrikaans segments. Um, and in the next two weeks, we're going to be introducing um, Isikosa and Zulu. We have 11 different languages in this country, but I want to focus on doing content exactly as we do in English, the same kind of conversations, but in different languages. Yes, we operate in a business world of predominantly English on this continent. However, it's not everybody's first language. Mm. So when you're sharing information and insight and you're doing it in their own mother tongue, it's much easier to, to understand, to implement, to ask questions in your own language. Um, so those those are the plans, and just to 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 continue growing and giving and sharing and mostly having fun. So make it make it relevant for the larger audience in the country, which is pretty much the key to successful content. Where can people find you guys? 
Um, you and I, well, they could find us at the nearest loony bin. In, in online radio or podcasting, you can find us at ebizradio.com. That's E-B-I-Z radio.com. And you can find us on all any streaming um, platform we're there, any podcast platform we're there. I'm not going to go through the whole list. We all know them. Mm. Uh, we literally are everywhere. Find us on LinkedIn, find us on Facebook, find us on Twitter, Instagram, you know. E ebizradio.com. Ingrid, it's been an absolute, absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for making the time. I know we did speak about this a couple of weeks ago already, and I'm finally glad that we got to do it. And it was absolutely awesome to have you on the show, um, a fellow broadcaster, and to hear your thoughts and, and insights into it. And absolutely i regard you as a pioneer in the industry and look up to what you have achieved and um, look forward to having a synergy with you guys going forward yeah absolutely you know what i think i, th I think the key to to growth mm. and success and sharing is collaboration mm. um and i love working with other people people because we all bring different things and we share different things um and that's amazing and i'm so privileged to have spent the last almost an hour with you it's it's like this is like my learn something new day and i've learned well that's how it operates that's how it's done when it's done properly well You're let amazing. me tell you let me let you in on a little secret yeah normally mm. this goes on for about 45 minutes which includes includes music breaks and um, I normally do about two music breaks in um, a 45 minute segment. We've now gone on for 50 minutes already without one music break. So it's been thoroughly engaging and so interesting that we didn't even get to any music. <laughs> so it's still a say in Afrikaans, for Stanje. I mean, yeah. really, that's what it's about. Precis. You know, and, and people, people will listen to this and they'll go, wow i'm really interested in this mm. and and they will enjoy it and they'll share it and and that's how it works you know if you've enjoyed this conversation share it get a mm. hold of no get hold of of me you know what is the worst either of us can say is no and i'm dyslexic so it actually means on, on. which is <laughs> I have to say, everything's like positive in my world because everything is on um just have fun, follow your dreams, learn, make mistakes. Hell, it's so much fun making mistakes. Oh, well, that's the only way to learn. Ingrid, thank you for making the time. Have yourself a beautiful day further and um, all the best, man. I, I look forward to seeing Eber's radio just grow and grow and grow and grow and own its market space. Absolutely. You know what they say, from your lips to God's ears and for for the Jewish people out there, I wish you all a Chag Zmech and a Shana Tova. May this new year bring relief for all of us. May it bring work for many people and may it bring kindness and care to everybody. Have a good day. There we go. Ingrid von Stein joining us, the owner and founder of eBiz Radio. And you can go visit them at ebiz.com. Um, great content on the platform and you can learn so much from that from from that platform just by um going and like ingrid was saying if you want to start a radio station they've got it and any form of business communication and it's like really a south african version of youtube <laughs> to a certain degree so pop over to ebiz.com and uh catch their live content as well as their uh, podcast content as well very very cool stuff indeed that's where we're going to leave the show for today. I'm going to play out with one song for you. Just to say that we did play a song in the second hour of the show. We're back tomorrow for Tuesday Trends, of course. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Be cool. Be safe. Remember what I always say. If it bugs you, baby, you got to deal with it. Playing out with some Hayley Steinfeld and Starving for You on RTLSA. Have a great afternoon. Love you a long time. Combine Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, 
Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. You're listening to RTLSA. I want to be in lockdown with Noel Johnson. You are listening to. You listening to. You're listening to. You're listening to Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. And you're listening to Noel Johnson. And you're gonna party it up listening to Noel Johnson. As I was saying, you're listening to my mate, Noel Johnson. Party L S A.